All right, hey guys, Coach Kimmy here. So I am gonna be trying these new tape-in extensions for fun. Um, so usually I get pieces, but this is one long one around the head and there's two pieces that go in. Normally it's a weft and they sew it in with needle and thread, but this is a tape-in weft. Super excited, Sarah and Heather went to the class to learn them, so I can't wait to give you the update on how they are, how they feel when I wash them, how they blend with my shorter hair, right? So let's see, it'll be fun. All right, stay tuned, guys. All right, so these are the new extensions, and they're a long weft, but they're tape-ins instead of a sew-in. So here we go, stay tuned. And here's Izzy, we have almost the same length there. This is her payback time to pull my hair. If she's mad at me. <laughs> okay. We pull the hair forward. Like no, don't touch the bottom. The bottom of the hair. I want you to pull it forward with your hair. I want you to see if it blends in that spot. Yeah, right. It looks great. Mom. Pull all of the extension hair colors with your hair underneath it. I'm doing that right now. You're pulling the front. Get all of it. There's a whole bunch of hair back there. Oh, oh, the whole. Hold it. I'm going to show you the thickness. So you don't yell at me. But well, you have to. You don't come single sided. So it's going to be like that. Yeah, you told me. And then, once I push this, now hold that. Once I put them in, then it goes, I take one over here and one over here, and it lays right on that top. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So there's four of them that will come in. Four total. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, that looks great. Okay. Yeah, Yay. I like to see them in long hair. Yeah. Look at how cool. Those are long. What? Look at them. How cool is that? Yay, stay tuned so you guys can come here. Modern Techniques, she can give you long hair real quick. Listen, long hair feels good. It makes me feel younger. Oh, She's sandwiching it on top, so there's two together connected. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. Did you straighten them before you did it? She did, she blew them out. Whoa, you got a lot of energy. Whoa. Izzy. <laughs> Let me see what it looks like if it out. Yeah. Oh yeah, that other piece will probably do it really good. So the other piece comes one okay. comes here. Yeah. 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 It works. Yeah. 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 I saw my layers. So, this is where it's supposed to go. Let me see.
hair, my hair is so layered, you really need to do it a little lower. It needs to be closer to this one because I have to cut it. Listen, this is longer. If I go shorter, this layer is even shorter. It's gonna be like this short with this long, long hair. Like you see it right now. Look at that. Do you understand? So I'm just telling you because I can blend. If it's a little higher, I can blend this better than I have to blend this with that piece. Okay, so then I'm gonna do this side first then, because this yeah. side might have to go a little bit higher because your layer is longer right here. Yeah, but I don't think so because I still have to do, Heather, it's, again, it's better for me to connect this than for me to connect this. This will be too short. You understand? Like, you see how much better this blends than this because it's like thicker. So you have to go like right above that so that I can blend that. I'm saying is then I have to just do another one of these. Okay. Right? Because I can still V it so that you can't see your cowlick. Right. But that's really on top of it. Right. Which is much better because at least it's longer so I can blend it. No, because listen, I'm going to like connect these coming down to make this layer. You know, I'm going to probably have to cut it to about here to make it look real and believable. I mean, listen, these are not really for my kind of hair, but we're just practicing and playing with it. So here it is. Looks good. So they're long, weft pieces, but they're just taping. Super light and super comfortable. Just saying. Okay. Super light and super comfortable. I love them. And it's a weft. It's a long taping. Piece by piece and just do a little piece at a time. These are your extensions, your fillers. Okay, piece by piece. And I'm going to start angling it. You have to be patient, step by step, piece by piece. Ta-da! What do you think? I love them. Yeah. Do you think I look younger with long hair or short hair? Let me know your thoughts. All right, let's talk about limiting belief systems. What are the things that go in your mind about yourself? So just think, do you say, I'm not smart enough? Do you say, I'm too selfish because I want more. So I shouldn't want more, right? A lot of people sometimes say that. They're like, I don't want more than that. But that shows me that they're in the room. Did you ever watch the movie, The Room? Oh my gosh, it was a true story. So this guy kidnaps this woman and then he puts and makes her like a whole little home in a shed. And then he gets her pregnant because he comes there almost every night to have sex with her. And this poor girl, that she gets pregnant, she has the little guy, but it becomes her like best friend, right? Because now she at least has him, but she kind of hid that she was pregnant. And then finally he got to an age that she tried to teach him how to escape. But this is the thing. He grew up in that room, in that shed with the mother. They did have a TV, but she told him and taught him. She was a brilliant, brilliant mother to teach him and, you know, educate him, but it didn't matter. He never went outside the shed for years. So this is what happens. Our limiting belief system is like being in the room. 
right? You just are so conditioned to the things that you were taught as a kid that it's hard when you get out of that, when you want to break old be limiting belief systems. So what happened was when he escaped and he got out, guess what? He would cry and he would say to his mother, I want to go back to the room. I want to go back to the room. And you know what? I felt that way when I left. I was at Gerber Salon for 19 years. And when this salon that, that came to me in Shrewsbury, it just literally came, like fell out of heaven and fell into my lap. And trust me, I was not looking for a salon. And you know what? I didn't really know. I, I wasn't really somebody that wanted to own something. I never really desired it or dreamed it or thought that I would ever be an owner. So it's funny how God knew, right? His plans were much bigger than mine, even though I didn't feel that way. But I definitely wanted to run back when I, the first six months were a nightmare for me because I was so conditioned to being at Gerber Salon and I was able to do what I wanted. I did great, amazing hair. I was a phenomenal hairstylist and um, I just got along with everybody there. I was so comfortable, right? Like he was so comfortable in that room with just him and his mom. And then he gets out and he's in a, in a hospital, they're checking him and then they had to go find his mom. And then he has all this family and everybody wants to see him. He is devastated. It was shocking and I felt the same way. It was so shocking when I had to like get out of my comfort zone. Listen, it was so hard for me that those first six months to a year, I cried a lot. I definitely thought I am not cut out to be an owner. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how to be an owner. I know how to do great hair, right? I was so comfortable doing great hair, but running an, a business is a whole nother animal, right? So I was so hard on myself. I was like, sell the salon, sell the salon. And I was like, I just want to go back to Gerber Salon. I would cry, I would call some of my old, you know, co-workers and I'd be like, this is so hard. I don't think I could do it. And you know what? Like they knew me really well. And you know, my one girl, Lauren, she's like, Kimmy, anything that you do, you'll always become great at. It doesn't matter. You are a challenger. You'll learn it and you'll get good at it. And you know what? One of my girls, Jessie, she worked with me. She'd always say, you're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. And that little tiny voice and that little tiny saying helped me so much. And I remember just, and I didn't even know about hypnosis, auto-suggestion. I didn't know about the book, Think and Grow Rich or the science of getting rich. I didn't know the biology to belief. Like I learned so much over the last eight years. <clears throat> but before that, I had so many limiting belief systems. You know, I just felt unworthy also. I just felt like, why would somebody drop this lap, this salon in my lap? I, I'm not good enough for this. So of course, I love a Henry Ford's quote. If you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. I also say, if, if you believe you can or you believe you can't, you're right. So I definitely believed I couldn't. And when customers would come in, they'd be so happy for me. I felt like I vomited up on them because I would be crying, tell them it's not a gift. It's just too hard. It's too much. And when the girls would come and ask me questions, okay, well, what do we do for this? Or what do we do for that? I didn't even know how to use my thinking mind, you know, your subconscious mind and your conscious mind. I had no clue about any of that. So that is why also I want you to know that when you're growing and you're stretching out of your limited belief system that you have in the subconscious mind, it's really uncomfortable. But what really helped me too was John Maxwell's book, The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. It helped me so much because when he said that when you're growing, you're gonna feel really uncomfortable, I started to realize, well, I feel really uncomfortable, so I must be growing, right? And then I would always say that little phrase that Jesse said to me, you're doing a good job, Kim, you're doing a good job. I remember just having to say it to myself because I would cry so much and I was just so uncomfortable that it really took me a good two years before I got comfortable. And I would say after a year, um, one of the salon owners, uh, Concrete, Christine, she did a mastermind group. And I remember, I thought, oh my gosh, I need that. Me and Heather both, my daughter, because we were fighting. Everything was chaos. Everything was confusing. Forget it. I didn't know how to do anything. I didn't know how to do the books. I didn't know how to, you know, I didn't know how to be organized at all. So thank God for the team that I had too, because they were all way smarter than me. They were all very strong. And like literally in six, in a week, I had a, a staff of six girls because the original girls that actually were there quit because, you know, they're like, who is this girl? She's coming in. She, she, we didn't even, I didn't even know them. I never even knew that salon existed. So that's how I knew too, like that God definitely dropped in my lap because otherwise I wasn't looking for something. Um, but you know, it's amazing that other people believed in me. 
So when um, somebody from my church says, Kimmy, there's a salon, you know, the guy passed away and they want to know, cause they said you're a hairdresser if you don't want to take it over. I was like, no way. I was like, but my, I'll tell my boss about it. But I just forgot. And then they asked me again the next week. And then one more weekend, they asked me that third week. And I just said, well, I remember going to church and I was just asking God, my little prayer to God. I was like, Lord, that's kind of weird. That's a big gift. I don't know if I'm worthy of that. Are you sure you want to give that to me? But I'll just go look at it. But I don't, I don't even know what I was doing anyway. I learned, I owned a salon, I mean, a, a condo for 20 years. Like I didn't know how to, you know, I'm thinking was it the same as owning a condo? No, it's not just so you know now, it's absolutely not. Um, so then I get in there and I seen it, it was beautiful. And I had my friend Randy come with me and he was like, Kimmy, this is a good opportunity. And I'll never forget my, my good friend, Christine, she was a lawyer. Her husband, Jimmy owned a big business and they're like, we're incorporating you. We're going to do everything for you. They literally did everything for me. And the woman who's amazing and an angel, Karen, she was absolutely magnificent too. Cause she's like, Kimmy, whatever you need, I'm here for you. And listen, she literally put like $20,000 in my checking account. Cause the two girls quit after I got in there. Um, that that did well and I thought well I do really well and if those two we'd be fine but then I got a staff of seven uh, in seven days or like in two weeks I had a great whole staff it's amazing the miracles that happened for that salon God opened up every door every door that's how I knew I was supposed to be there even though I didn't like it and I definitely cried to Karen I'd call her up a lot and I'd be crying and crying I'd be like this is too much it's too hard I mean my daughter fought so much I'd tell her Heather you don't care because I didn't I didn't even know how to care exactly right so I'd be yelling at her because she just wanted to do hair she was my assistant for five years that was a whole nother story so it was just this like you know it's a lot of work if you don't if you're not organized and you don't know what you're doing but guess what you can learn and that's what I did so when Christine had that mastermind group I learned that I had to learn to believe in myself because if you don't believe in you why should other people believe in you and I learned that I had a subconscious mind. I learned that I had a thinking mind, that I could use my thinking mind. I learned that I could have systems and structure and all those things that I didn't know. And environment mattered too. So it was a great journey in the last 10 years of like literally going through the process of finding the right team, right? It takes time, like a football team. That's the same thing. You know, you have to go through different guys. Make sure you're all on the same team. You vibe together. You grow together. I, a lot of those girls that I had that I started out with, you don't finish with because, you know, I started to get stronger. They were all stronger than me in the beginning, but then I started to grow and I started to get coached and then I became a coach and then they didn't really want coaching because they had their own, you know, stuff that they were good at and that they learned and that they knew they didn't really want to grow and expand. And they could grow on their own time when the student is ready the teacher appears but then when they left i'd hire new people that wanted to be coached that wanted to grow that wanted to learn so it's really cool in the way that things happen but you gotta believe in yourself you gotta know you gotta get rid of your limiting belief system of self-sabotage saying you're too fat you're not good enough you're not smart enough and listen not that sometimes those things might not be true because i definitely was not smart enough to handle a business not knowing what I was doing. However, I just kept learning and growing. I learned what leadership was. I learned how to be organized. I learned how to have systems. You know, it just took time. And I love this quote by Bruce Lee. He says, don't be afraid of going slow. Be afraid of being, of being stuck and still. Like don't just do nothing. You just, but it's okay to go slow and it's okay to organize. There's a great little, um, I wanna say like story about, uh, it's, it's a, it's a guy that basically is dying and he has two sons and he says to them, I'm going to give you a choice. I could either give you a penny and double it every day, um, or I could give you a million dollars. So the one son took the penny that doubled every day and then the other son took the million dollars. Now I'm just going to briefly give you the story, but you could look it up on Google or YouTube. I'm sure it's on there. Um, just say the story about the million dollars and either a penny a day or a million dollars. So the one son that did the penny a day was able to go slow and was able to grow a business, was able to learn and how to manage things and how to manage people because that's what it is to have a business. You know, the hardest thing is to manage people, right? So I had to learn personalities and all that. So anyway, he really grew that business wonderfully and he made way more money than the guy that got the million dollars and didn't know what to do with it. You know, money is energy also. 
It's really cool when you learn how to think differently. And I've really learned how to think differently because I just was in, I'm an insatiable learner too. And because once I started to believe in myself and I was able to see like, okay, I'm getting better and better and better. That's another thing you need to say to yourself. I'm getting better and better and better. If you're learning and you're growing and you keep pushing forward, right? If you don't push forward and you're stuck and you're super comfortable, you probably, you'll stay stuck or you'll go backwards. That's another thing. They're like the current doesn't stay still. You're either pushing to go forward or it's pulling you back. So just remember that you're worthy of so much more. Get rid of your old belief systems that you're not good enough, right? Start learning to believe in yourself because if you don't believe in you, why should somebody else believe in you? And I think of this as the last thing I'm gonna share with you. I want you to think of <clears throat> when you love and care about somebody else so much, but, but like, let's just say there's somebody that you really are friends with that doesn't know the person that you really love and care about, but you want them to meet your, your good friends. And then you want to tell your good friend about that person and say, oh, good things about them because you believe in them. But if they don't believe in themselves, you want to bank on them, but yet they won't bank on themselves. Do you understand? Like it should be so important that they learn to bank on themselves because a lot of times we could want to get somebody a job and like if they don't believe in themselves and they don't bank on themselves but we're like wanting we believe in them more than they believe in themselves a lot of times you'll be let down right because people have to do their own work so remember you have to do your own work for your own self first it's important to believe in yourself it is you are worthy to believe in yourself and i love carl jung he says you must go within or else you'll go without and you have to start building up that inner being be filled with love and abundance and God's blessings and his goodness. And I'm going to tell you, your whole life will change. So this is Coach Kimmy. I hope you enjoy these tips and these tricks of just learning to grow and expand and become the best version of yourself. Have a great day.